is nothing advancing towards me. What we have here? Hello, Wasp Slam. Must have lost contact with its platoon. Hmm. Easy pickings. That's number 83. I'm surprised I managed to get this amount of kills after Stalingrad. I can't say the same about Curse, though. Oh well, what can you do? Oh, hello there, new viewers. Welcome to the World War II rant. My name is Toxic Tank, and I'll be your narrator through the course of this episode of this new series. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the 501st Heavy Panzer Battalion. But before I go any further, we need to go to a different location that suits this kind of story. So sit back, relax, and listen to me rant. Let's go, shall we? Ah, Tanisha, the land of sand, dust devils, and where it's hot enough to melt the paint off of me. Anyway, I know a lot of you are going to be asking me that this isn't the place where it all started, and you are correct. The 501st was created in Erfurt, Germany on May 10th, 1942. Since the development of the Tiger Tank has been put into production, the 501st was promised to Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, who has been struggling trying to keep British Bernard Montgomery's forces from advancing further across North Africa. The battalion consisted of 20 Tiger Tanks and 25 Panzer III Ns. The Panzer III's were used to give support for the Tiger Tanks and for the infantry. But this was experimental, since the Germans were not sure on what all heavy tank battalions should have until mid-1943, they decided that all heavy tank battalions should have Tiger Tanks only. The 501st Battalion Command would have two Tigers and a platoon of six Panzer III's for reconnaissance and for support while the two company commands would have one Tiger and two Panzer III's, and the two companies would have a set of four platoons with two Tigers and two Panzer III's in each platoon. This kinda sounds like a game of cards, but it's not. The first three Tigers, along with four Panzer III's of the 501st, landed in Tunis on November 23rd, 1942. Some may argue that they landed in Bizerte, but I'm gonna go with Tunis on this one just because I can. After the landing, just over a week later, they were sent to combat under the command of Major Hans Georg Luder for a counterattack against the Allies to relieve some German ground forces. After the successful counterattack, they were sent to the town of Tebupa for an attack against the British 78th Infantry Division and the British 6th Armored Division, also known as the Blade Force. After receiving reinforcements from the recent attacks the 501st was involved in, the strength was increased to four Tigers and two Panzer III's. With infantry and Stuka support, Major Luder attacked the Allies within Tebupa, destroying over 134 tanks out of the 182 tanks which forced the Allies to retreat out of the town, leaving the Axis victorious over the battle, but it came at a price since all the Tigers of the 501st were knocked out when the battle ended. A couple days later, after repairing and receiving reinforcements, the 501st's strength increased to 7 Tigers and 5 Panzer III's. On December 10th, they were ordered to move down the road to Massacolt, or also known as Burj al Ame, to meet up with the elements of the 10th Panzer Division in order to gain more ground against the Allies. After the meetup, they attacked along the road towards Majaz al Bab, destroying 14 M3 Stewards and arrived outside of Majaz until the 501st was sent to Jadida a few miles east as a reserve element for a main attack. So, as you can see, the 501st is becoming a very, very effective fighting force for Rommel to have. Let's see what else they can do. On January 15th, 1943, after receiving more reinforcements in the ending days of December, the battalion was split with General Weber and Major Luder for Operation Elbot, or Courier, which was to capture several crossroads and a dam being held by Free French forces. Major Luder took five Tigers and ten Panzer III's along with the 69th Mechanized Infantry Regiment in order to assist him in the operation, while General Weber took the 756th Mountain Infantry Regiment along with eight Tigers and eight Panzer III's. On January 19th, Major Luder moved his forces to capture a crossroad near the small town of Hermosa, while General Weber provided support for his attack, defeating several small groups of Free French forces. They also captured several American M3 half-tracks, which were turned over to the infantry to be put into good use. The next day, British forces counterattacked against the battalion and managed to destroy two Tigers with British engineers and an anti-tank gun. Then on January 24th, more British soldiers attacked the battalion, creating heavy German losses, but the battalion managed to repel the attack. 
After part one of Operation Elbot was completed, a part two was put into action on January 31st in order to gain more ground against the British forces. The battalion was once again split into two groups with General Weber and Major Luder, and they attacked the British defenses but were forced in retreat after receiving heavy tank losses by strong British anti-tank gun defenses and minefields. After the full retreat, the operation was called off after the unsuccessful breakthrough. A few days later, on February 8th, the 1st Company of the 501st was ordered to join up with the 10th Panzer Division for Operation Fuhin's Wind, or Spring Breeze. The objective was to push back the American 1st Armored Division as far as possible and take back the several towns the Axis lost to the Allies. After the victories near Fade Pass and City Bo Sid, the operation was successful due to the inexperienced 1st Armored Division fighting against the well-trained 10th Panzer Division. The 1st Armored Division lost hundreds of tanks and thousands of soldiers were either killed, wounded, or taken as POWs. Through the course of the operation, the 501st managed to knock out 20 Sherman tanks of the 1st Armored Division, and after the Axis victory at Catherine Pass, each company of the 501st was given 15 Panzer IVs as a reinforcement. After the 501st received their World War Ward, they were sent north and prepared for a massive German offense, and this is when things started to turn for the worse. No, it has nothing to do with bombers. Up in the northern area of Tunisia, the 501st was preparing itself for Operation Oxenkopf, or Oxhead, a massive German offense to try and take the major towns of Majaz al Bab and Beja, creating a pocket of British troops within the towns, making it easy to capture them. The 501st attacked from the northern approach along with a motorized infantry unit from the 10th Panzer Division, while the 334th Infantry Division attacked from the southern approach along with tank support. The battalion managed to capture a railway station near the small hamlet town of Sidi Nissa, then continued towards the town of Beja when British artillery started firing at the battalion, slowing them from advancing further, but they still continued after several night marches. During the advancement, multiple Tiger tanks struck several mines and mobilizing them, and Major Luder was also wounded during the course of the operation. After numerous artillery bombardments, air attacks, and bad weather, the battalion was forced to pull out and the operation was a failure. Seven Tigers were lost, and one managed to make it back to German lines. After the recent failed offense, the battalion spent the next few days repairing their damaged tanks. Their strength was increased to six Tigers, 12 Panzer III's, and seven Panzer IVs. On March 17th, the 501st joined the first company of the 504th Heavy Panzer Battalion. Major August Scheidensticke took over as commander of the 501st after Major Luder's recent hospitalization. But by the time the 504th reached Tunisia, the Allies in the southern areas managed to push back the Axis troops and regain the ground they lost earlier in the war. By mid-April, a full retreat was issued for the Axis, and by early May, the Allies launched a massive offense, forcing the Axis to surrender on May 12, 1943. 230,000 Axis troops surrendered to the Allies, and the 501st fell victim to this massive letdown. The Tunisian campaign was finally over. I know that most of you are thinking that this is the end of the 501st, but you're wrong. Some of the battle-hardened and wounded crew members of the 501st managed to make it back to Europe and got refitted with new Tiger tanks and a new commander. So this means we can leave Tunisia, which is great because the sun is making me overheat, and go to the other location which is across the Mediterranean Sea. Let's go. I hope these boats are strong enough to carry me over there. God, those stupid idiots, they should have told me about the weight limit on that boat. I had to swim the rest of the way across the Mediterranean Sea. Which is kind of strange, because I'm a tank, and tanks don't swim. Anyway, welcome to the Eastern Front, or should I say Mozdok. This is also Soviet territory, so I have to be careful around here. Getting back to the 501st, it's been months now since the 501st has been recuperating itself after the massive Axis surrender of the Tunisian campaign. The battalion was sent off to the Eastern Front to do battle against the advancing Soviet soldiers. After the 1943 Heavy Tank Battalion conclusion, the 501st now has a total of 45 new Tiger tanks. A Sonderkraftfeuerzeug 250 scout car was used for reconnaissance instead of Panzer III Ns, since because Panzer III's were more suitable of a infantry support role. The battalion command now has three Tigers instead of two, and the company commands now have two Tigers instead of one. 
There are now three companies instead of two, and each company has a set of three platoons of four Tigers in each platoon. By December 5th to the 12th, the 501st was sent to Vitesk, Belarus, and then traveled several miles across Belarus into Ukraine. They made contact with the Soviets within the Russian town of Lasovka. A massive battle broke out when the 501st spotted an enemy tank formation. At the end of the battle, the Soviet tank formation lost 21 tanks and 28 guns, while the 501st lost two tanks and three company commanders were wounded during the course of the battle. After the battle, the 501st withdrew from the town because infantry support couldn't follow them any further. Then three days later, after the attack, the battalion commander, Major Eric Louver, went missing on December 23, 1943, when he was forced to switch tanks after his own tank was knocked out during a battle. Since they were unable to find him or even his body, he was pronounced killed in action, and the battalion continued to fight against the Soviets without him. For the next five days of fighting against the Soviets without a battalion commander, the 501st managed to destroy 81 Soviet tanks, but by the end of December, 16 out of the 39 tanks available were operational, and to make matters worse, two more Tigers were lost to Soviet hands. In January of 1944, a new commander was assigned to the battalion named Major von Legat. I couldn't find a photo of him, so try to imagine what he looks like. With a new commander, the 501st started doing multiple missions within the Orsha region, and still continued to lose more tanks in the process of these missions. The battalion lost 9 Tiger tanks and only 17 out of the 29 were operational. On April 1st, spare parts were delivered to the battalion, which increased the number of operational tanks to 27. By mid-June, 9 Tiger tanks were transferred to the 509th Heavy Panzer Battalion for refitting after their loss of the Second Battle of Kiev. As you can tell, the war is not going very well for Germany. And the hell? No! You've got to be kidding me! You cannot stop the might of the Soviet Red Army. We are unstoppable. We are unbreakable. Great shot. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying, the war on the Eastern Front for Germany is not going well, and the Soviets have come up with a plan to make matters worse. On January 22, 1944, the Soviets launched Operation Bagration, a massive Soviet offense in order to break through the German defensive lines and push the German forces straight out of Poland. The 501st was caught off guard and had some independent battles against Soviet troops near the city of Orsha. Some battles included the battalion fighting against Soviet IS-2s, which can destroy a Tiger tank with a single shot with its powerful 122mm main gun. After losing many tanks, the 501st was forced to withdraw out of the city of Orsha and fall back towards the Berezina River. Several Tiger tanks of the 501st didn't make it towards the river due to a short amount of fuel, and when a Tiger tank did run out of fuel, they had to be destroyed since the Germans didn't want any of their tanks to fall into Soviet hands. After reaching the river, six Tiger tanks were able to be ferried across while the rest were blown up before the Soviets could even get close enough. And I know some of you are going to be asking me, why didn't they just use a bridge nearby? Well, don't forget that most of the bridges during the war weren't strong enough to withstand the weight of a Tiger tank, and the battalion would have to get some engineers to reinforce the bridge's structural support which would cost precious time. Plus, the Germans blew up most of the bridges because they wanted to try and stall the Soviet offense. Does that answer the question? Anyway, moving on. After the river crossing, the 501st continued its long retreat towards the capital city of Minsk, where replacement tanks were given to the battalion to form an arranged dispersed defensive line near the city. However, two more Tigers were lost because of low fuel and another broke down while retreating towards the capital city. The Soviets still advancing, the battalion withdrew to the town of Malyishna, but during the retreat, the battalion lost most of its Tigers from running out of fuel and some became bogged down due to the soft ground and had to be destroyed, leaving the 501st no more operational tanks left. After losing all of their tanks, the crew members and the battalion commander at the 501st managed to escape the wrath of the advancing Soviet troops by train. They made it back to Germany on July 14th where they got refitted and retrained with new and somewhat better tanks. So this means we can leave this part of the Eastern Front and head to the final part of this wild adventure. Let's go!
Here we are, Warsaw. Okay, not really, but close enough. With the 501st back in Germany for refitting, they were sent off to the Eastern Front once again with 45 new Tiger II tanks on August 7th, 1944, trying to hold off the advancing Soviets. On August 11th, the battalion joined up with the 16th Panzer Division for an attack on a Soviet bridgehead near a town that I can't seem to pronounce. Yeah. Anyway, the battalion stopped attacking the Soviet bridgehead due to high resistance. They continued down the road to the village of Oklingdorf and were ambushed by Soviet T-34s. The battalion lost three Tiger IIs due to ammo explosions from the shells being stored in the turret. After that, all shells from the turret were removed and the total amount of shells in each Tiger II was reduced to 68. On August 22nd, poor tactics were noticed by German High Command in and around the city of Radom. Major von Wolgat was relieved of duty due to suspicion of being involved in the assassination attempt on Adolf Hitler in the July 20th plot. He was later replaced by Major Zhimish, who took over as battalion commander. Again, I have no photo, so try to imagine what it looks like. On September 1st, the battalion was assigned to the 38th Panzer Corps, and between the months of October and November, the number of working tanks rose from 36 to 49. This boost was from the remnants of the 509th Heavy Panzer Battalion joining the 501st. On December 21st, the 501st was redesignated as the 424th Heavy Panzer Battalion. It became part of the 4th Panzer Army, which was in the 24th Panzer Corps. To avoid confusion, I'll still call it the 501st. On January 12, 1945, the Soviets launched the Vistula Oder Offense, which was to push back the German forces from the Vistula River to the Oder River. The battalion was deployed far forward but soon received orders to move to the town of Lasso. When the battalion reached the town, they attacked the advancing Soviets, but this attack caused many Tiger tanks to get bogged down into the soft ground and became unrecoverable, which caused the Germans to destroy most of their own tanks. Both the Soviets and the 501st lost many tanks, and the battalion also lost their battalion commander, Major Zemish, who was killed on January 13th. The next day, the remnants of the battalion withdrew with the Tiger tanks they had left over to the town of Grunberg. The 501st scraped the bottom of the barrel in trying to get more tanks, which they did, but only managed to get two Panthers, three Panzer IVs, two Noshorns, and a handful of Hetzers. After trying to delay the incoming Soviet attacks, the remnants of the battalion withdrew to Panbun on February 5th by train. On February 11th, the crew members of the 501st were transferred to the 512th Heavy Tank Destroyer Battalion, which consisted of 20 new Yag Tigers. They were sent off to do battle against the advancing Allied troops on the Western Front, but after multiple unsuccessful battles near several German cities, the battalion finally surrendered on April 1st, 1945, in the town of Hochster. Through the course of the Second World War, the 501st destroyed 450 tanks with a loss of 120 tanks. For every tank the battalion lost, almost four tanks will be destroyed by the battalion. So, we pretty much have come to the end of this episode with the 501st. From Africa, to the Eastern Front, to Germany, to the end. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Ha ha! I've come back with vengeance. Who the hell are you? I'm the tank that was shot in Mostock. Weren't you a T-34? Yes, but now he's different. I'm Russian KV-2, and now I have big gun now, and you will be destroyed. Goodbye, toxic tank. Number 84. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of this new series on my channel. Until next time, tank on. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and share this episode. Also, if you want me to make more episodes, head over to my Patreon account and send a donation to help me make more episodes. For any suggestions for future episodes, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Also, subscribe to my channel and join my toxic army, and we'll take over the world together.
Hey, I'm still alive. <laughs>